So good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Please uh, welcome to today's uh, live session. Today we're going to learn about uh, flood monitoring, uh, partners uh, in the room. So we have uh, Victoria Nyaga, who's present, prepared a very good presentation, flood risk monitoring. And I also wish to ask your participation in terms of uh, we listen to her, then uh, we can uh, ask questions later, or also we can post some of the questions on the chat and much more. We can also share some of the experiences or even the coordinates of area of your choice. I know we have very um, some areas which are hotspots, but uh, it's only through you that uh, we are able to see some of these hotspots and share his amazing story Oh, uh, so looking at uh, Victoria Nyaga, how is your uh, presentation? Are you ready to participate? <laughs> Are you ready to share with us your uh, presentation today? Yes. Okay. Um. So today's uh, session will be about flood monitoring and risk, uh, flood risk modeling. So this notebook is um. The, note, the notebook we'll be talking about is the notebook developed by Afrigist for their flood uh, monitoring module earlier in the year. So um, floods are the most important hazard in Africa because in terms of frequency and magnitude, they eclipse all other um, disasters that we have, such as drought and war. Um, urban areas are most uh, prevalently hit or affected by floods because although they account for a very small proportion of the land cover, they are the one of the biggest supporters of daily human life and have quite a great influence on environmental and ecological changes. As, uh, the effect of flood is is quite magnified in urban areas, especially because of the high concentration of populations and economic activities that take place in urban areas, which makes flood monitoring and model, modeling of flood risk very important for these particular land cover sections. Now, Sentinel-1 imagery, or the broader class is a uh, SAR imagery, is most preferable for flood monitoring because um, the microwave radar is able to clearly differentiate between water and other non-water objects. This is because uh, the backscatter values for, for SAR are very low since the water is smooth, hence flooded areas on the imagery appear as dark tones and uh, land surface areas appear as bright tones. Now, Digital Earth Africa provides uh, analysis-ready Sentinel-1 data which can be used for developing cost-effective and accurate flood monitoring uh, procedures or activities, particularly in areas where rivers are not equipped with gauges. Um, in um, flood monitoring using Sentinel-1, um, we have the VV and VH uh, polarization image uh, bands. Now, VV polarization is preferred for flood monitoring because it provides a wider range of uh, values from vegetated land surfaces, and which leads to a potential overlap with low um, low backscatter values associated with water, which um, causes misclassification of land as flooded if you use VH. But VV avoids this. Um, you can quite clearly differentiate between water and non-water, so that is the most preferred um, method. As you can see from the images on the screen, um, we tested a notebook for the Lokoja area in Nigeria, and you can clearly see from the before and after flooding images using the VH and uh, VV polarization, you can, uh, the VV uh, image has a better contrast and can clearly see the urban area along the river and the flooded, er the flooded area for um, around the river. We can also go to flood risk modeling. Now in the notebook, we use the elevation data for um, flood risk mod modeling. The specific product is the Copernicus uh, DEM, as you can see on the image on the left. So uh, we use that to predict the high, the high risk 
or and the medium risk uh, flood prone areas specifically for the built up areas and the cropland which you can see on the image on the left now we'll move on to showing how to display i mean how to run this notebook so we can start at the top um, So this notebook has uh, three sections, I will, as we'll see going on, which is the flood monitoring session, section, the land cover classification section, and the um, flood risk uh, modeling section. Now, due to time, I will not be running the cells in the notebook. I've already run them. So I'll just do a quick walk through, through the various sections. So we start off by um, loading the packages we'll need in the notebook and also creating the uh, DAS cluster and connecting to the data cube and also defining our analysis parameters. You'll notice if from previous uh, sessions that this is the format or template we use for most of our notebooks for reproducibility and um, consistency in uh, development. Now uh, we can see our the area that we defined as an analysis area. So this is the Lokoja city in Nigeria. You can see the river and the urban area uh, around it. Now we'll load, fast load our Sentinel-1 data using, uh, uh, by querying the data. Then we'll also apply a speckle filter. The specific filter here is the Lee filter. So we apply that to Sentinel-1, then uh, converted the values to decibel values in this section. Now you can view the fast um, fast um, uh, VV and BH images for their time range. So we defined, so we are trying to see the flooding uh, event that occurred in the time range um, between uh, July of 2021 and September of 2021. As you can clearly see, uh, uh, as I explained in the presentation, we selected the V uh, V polarization to use for um, the flood monitoring, which you can see it's uh, from the um, uh, the histogram that it has a better, um, but a clearer picture of uh, dividing water and non and non water uh, areas. So we determined the threshold that we'll use to separate water and non-water, and we uh, threshold the Sentinel-1 data sets that we have, that we loaded. So you can now clearly see the water extent in July, which is our pre-flood image, and the water extent in September, which is our post-flood um, image. And uh, straight off the bat, you can see the from the visualization that the uh, this around this area, you can see where the flooding occurred and also slightly to the bottom left. Next, the next step is to uh, detect these uh, flooded areas by using the, the July and September uh, water extent images. And from this uh, plot, you can see um, the pink areas are areas that were not, uh, were classified as no water and uh, change to the water water areas from uh, the July to September. And then we can see areas that, uh, small areas, the uh, colored in yellow, which were water areas, but then in September there were none, there was no water. And then we can see the area um, that remained as water, which we uh, assume is the, constant river path. The next step was a uh, land cover and land use classification. So using the July and September um, VV polarization Sentinel-1 images, we used the K-means clustering to define the up to sort of classify the images to get the urban area. So in this case, uh, we used three clusters um, for uh, the classification 
and then we selected um, selected the pixel value as two to say uh, to say these are the urban um, we what we think are the urban areas. So as you can see in the image here, these are the results for the K-means clustering predicted image for July. And we also have the K-means clustering predicted image for September. Now, we also validated the uh, land cover classification using the ESA land cover product. So um, you can see in these steps, we load the product and then uh, get the urban or built up areas from the, uh, from the uh, ESA land cover and then use those to validate. So using various accuracy metrics, such as the overall accuracy, producer accuracy and user accuracy and F1 score. So did perform pretty highly. You can see from the overall accuracy is about 90.64% for the July classification. And we also have um, around the same for the September, 90.64% for the September clustering results. Now we'll use this clustering results uh, in the next section to determine uh, the build-up areas and cropland areas that were affected by flood. So in this case, uh, you can see the um, the urban area, the vegetation, um, urban. Uh, sorry, the urban land cover, the vegetation land cover, the area that we, um, is the river, is a constantly the river, and we have the flooded areas which are in pink. And as you can see, they are, it was the cropland areas were the most highly affected um, areas here. In the next section, we'll now move on to flood risk assessment. So, this is where we ass uh, assess whether an area is high risk or medium risk for uh, flooding events. This is using the this DM product, the DEM COP30 meter resolution product. So we loaded that in and then determined using a threshold value of areas that have an elevation of less than 50 will have a high risk of flooding and areas with a threshold um, sorry, with an elevation value of more than 50, but less than 100 have a medium uh, risk of flooding. So using this, the elevation data set and uh, the urban and vegetation uh, land cover that we previously had loaded, loaded we are able to clearly uh, define which urban areas and cropland areas are flood prone. So you can, clear, you can see here, um, the areas in red are built up areas that are at high risk of flooding. Then we have the yellow areas where we have um, the cropland uh, land cover areas that are at high risk of flooding. Um, in purple, we have the medium or built up areas that are at medium risk of flooding. And we have um, the green areas are um, the cropland um, cropland areas that are at medium risk of flooding. Finally, we have the areas that would be based on our threshold would be unaffected built up areas or unaffected uh, cropland, which is in green and red. We also did some calculations to determine um, the area in kilometers squared for the different flooding risk areas. So you can have a plot of it at the bottom showing the graph of the total area, total urban area and the high risk, um, medium risk and unaffected flooding areas. We also did the same for the cropland areas. So we, you can clearly see the, compare the total cropland area for our area of interest and the areas at risk of high, at high risk of flooding at medium risk of flooding and the areas that would be unaffected. Um, at this point, I'd like to welcome any questions. 
Thank you so much, <coughs> Victoria. Uh, participants, uh, please, uh, any question for Victoria or uh, somewhere you need more clarification? So in case you've joined late today, we've been talking about uh, flood risk monitoring and uh, she was showing the example of uh, Lokoja in Nigeria and also checking whether there is a hand up from uh, one of the participants, Mr. Wallace. Over to you, sir. Hello, sir. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, very quick, I'd like to know when you said area of interest, can you take us back to the map for the area? Sorry, could you repeat the final part can, of your question? Can, can you please take us back to the map? I wanted to see the area of interest on the map view. Okay, now with the map we have on our screen now, are you able to give it, bring it out in sections using the demarcation of the mid, mid, mid region lines? Um, you mean zooming in? Or? Yeah, and then, make, and then report in sections. You can see phone areas and then you can see forest areas. So if you can, for instance, on your, where you have your cursor, to the left side of the map, is it Lokoja? Yes. I was having, I was trying to do something. I wanted to see if probably we can get the differentiation between the urban areas and then the undeveloped areas. Um, in an undeveloped, you mean non-urban areas? Like, yes, um, perfect. Like the top, yeah, where the cursor is now, so that uh, the report won't be across board for the selected area in red. Oh, oh okay. Um, so what we do is, um, I highlighted in these sections where we specifically picked um the uh urban area using the land cover k-means cluster, clustering you can also use the urban area derived from the the various land cover products we have like the isa world cover and then just use these specific areas like you can see here this the red area is the up, built up urban areas and use that together with the flood um the what uh the flood monitoring images to uh to decide um or to generate a report for um, uh, flooding specifically for urban areas. I hope, does that answer your question? Yes, please, it does. Okay. It does, thank you very much. Uh, I think, uh, Victoria, uh, this question from Frank Gerner. Yeah, uh, good morning once again, Victoria from Ghana. Please, I want to find out, when you go to the last session of the of the slide, or the, yeah, I want to know, how can you quantify the percentage of the affected area, then let's say the cropland, like in percentage-wise, not in the area-wise, if you want to find a percentage, how do you do that? Uh, okay, so, uh that would require just a bit of change in this section where you can, um, after getting the total, uh, for example, in this area, the total urban area, you can then um, divide by the, take the median um, area affected, divide by this value and multiply by a hundred and then um, plot it uh, just on the same graph. So this will, there's not much change needed, but it will just a simple change of the math behind it, and you'll be able to see the um total so, percentage area. 
So is it possible to show some demonstration for us to see? Um, okay, hope it can go quickly. Okay. Um. Uh, hello, Victoria. Hello, everybody. Hello. Uh, Victoria, reporting to the um, the, uh, the, uh, the 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 filters selected to to, to select the uh, the area or the fluted area. So, uh, which uh, new filters uh, do you do you have chosen to uh, uh, or applied in this study? Is it um, a multiplicative or uh, additive or uh, combining the both means uh, additive and multiplicative? And uh, which value do you have uh, chosen for? Uh, uh, for this study, is it um, uh, LE3 multiple by 3 or 9 by 9? Uh, um, for this module, if I understand your question correctly, uh, we decided to assess uh, flood risk by using elevation, and specifically, we chose the values that if an area has an elevation of less than 50 meters, then we classify that as a area of, at high risk of flooding. Then if an area has a elevation of less than 100, but greater than 50, then this area is at medium risk of flooding. So I think that's how the parameters for the study were selected. Uh, okay, so uh, just uh, for the... Uh... For the same case for the filters, I'm, I'm actually talking about the filter that you have used to that you use to to select the uh, the fluted area. So I propose that uh, to uh, to add another parameters uh, to the uh, filtering phase or the filtering part. So I uh, I propose that um, if it's possible to add. Um, a noise standard deviation, for example, value, and uh, for example, uh, the additive noise mean, or even the multiplicative noise mean. Oh, oh to use the the mean to um, to now I'm threshold. Talking, yes. Yeah, I'm talking about the uh, the filter that you have used to that you use it to uh, select. Uh, I'm talking about the D filter. Oh, oh, you're talking about the uh, speckle the filter. filter yeah. Oh, okay. Yes, it would, that would be a great uh, addition. Yeah, to um, apply it to yeah. in this in this case. Yeah, this one. So here, um, I think that you use the the leaf filter with. Uh, the width uh, size five to multiple by multiplied by five. Oh, yeah. Is it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, uh, so I, I propose that you add another options, another parameters in the uh, in the in the uh, in the filtering select uh, in the filtering uh, part. So, uh, for example, you can add. Uh, for, uh, add uh, a noise standard deviation and an additive noise mean, and another and the, and, the, and uh, a third value like the multiplicative noise uh, mean. I think that will uh, will improve and uh, and uh, will improve the uh, the filtering part, and and you and you will have uh, an increase a better result. Oh, thank you for the suggestion. We will have a look at improving this for this notebook and other notebooks. Thank you, Anis. Thank you. Thank you, Victor. So, uh, Martin, so my question will be digressing from just the impact assessment. Yeah. Uh, are you able to like uh, generate like the flood levels? Um, could you elaborate briefly on what flood levels are? So 
uh, from the impact assessment, you, you were able to, to demonstrate like the flood, the flooded areas and the flooding extent. So are you able to generate like the, the, the levels of the, of the river flow of the steam flow? Oh, um, we haven't had a look at that, but we would be happy if you have any suggestions on how we could improve. Wow, well, I was just asking, so I thought uh, maybe you've done something the same, so it would have been a point of interest. Thank you oh, so uh, much, uh, Martin. I think I can direct you to the stream flow forecasting that uh, has been done with Regional Center, who's our our partner, and actually I'm with the partner in regional center where they have had uh, such a stream flow forecasting models. Uh, we can share that information with you. And from this platform, uh, we are just able to provide an assessment on the recent events. And this use cases was very, use, use, very useful for Nigeria. And uh, we'll keep you informed as we do the developments. And also looking at Benjamin who has both hands up. Benjamin, sir. Um, yes, thank you so much for the opportunity. Yeah, so um, basically, I'm also working on the same thing for one of my PhD, my PhD, one of my PhD research um, objective. But then the thing I've been thinking of is uh, the, uh, you see here, you are using the coordinate to select the place as in a, a square kind of, you know, so this does not depict the whole region what is happening? Yeah, so um, at a point that you want to do the calculation to know the amount of area that is being uh, used for urban development, like chess and the encroachment on the low lying area that are liable to flooding, the statistics will not depict the exact information. So. Uh, Um, so I'm thinking if we as viewer will try to um, um, kind of look down on the work or kind of, um, so I'm thinking maybe if we could use the shifa which would capture the uh, the whole region in case you are working in a district or a region which would depict the real information on ground. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. Um, if I understand you correctly, you're talking about if you had like a shape file for an area of interest. The, the boundary. Because when you go to the statistics, where you presented the statistics, it does not depict the real exact information on the flooding in the steady area. Because there are some areas that are left out. Oh, um, so if you have um, an area of interest in terms of a ship file, well, we have yeah. in, the, in the real world example, for example, the rainfall, um, Chaps notebook, we do give an example of how you can load your area of interest and use it to load data and conduct your analysis. Um, okay. I think it's in the real world example. Um, yeah. Rainfall. Yeah. yeah. So okay. we do provide. I've not gone through this file. Yeah. No, I've gone through that chips data. Yeah. Yeah. So you have an option here of what we have an example for African countries. So you can load your um, GeoJSON or shapefile, select the specific polygon you'd like, and then continue on okay. to conduct your analysis. Good, good, good. That would be great. Yes, because I've been thinking, I've been thinking a lot on that. All thank right, you thank so you so much. much. Uh, thank you so yeah. much, Benjamin. And if uh, uh, Victoria, you may, I might just show you something to make sure people don't give you too many questions, uh, just helping Victoria here. So the next question is, why did we select uh, Lokoja? Uh, one thing is also look at uh, how we can access uh, the radar information or radar data. So when you go to the Digital Earth Africa map, uh, you can go to the radar box scatter values and uh, you can add the the normalized uh, backscatter on the continent. Then also as back practice, I was trying to do the same for Niami. So uh, you can filter by location 
and uh, I can have this on my image right now and uh, I can share also with my colleague Hassane uh, based in Yami. Uh, I can just put it in the, in the chat uh, for him to see uh, so that he can also be able to follow up. Uh, so that means on your Zoom uh, chat, uh, you can be able to see the, the, the location of somewhere or what someone else is doing. So that is the digital Africa map for near me. And based on this area, I was able to use uh, the, the, the information from Victoria. And uh, I have the notebook already here, which might take some time to load as well, but uh, it's very useful just to show you how easy the process is so that uh, some of us can start using the platform today and will be empowered. So these are the extents uh, for Niami uh, at the point where the river uh, is going through the city. And if you've been to Niami several times, there's been some several developments the last few years. And uh, recently in October, there were some floods and also in 2020, there were some floods and we were able to capture some parts of the river. So the other part is that uh, you might choose to change the extents of your work. So it's just a matter of changing the extents to cover maybe a bigger area. So once you know how you can make your work a little bit uh, more interactive is that you can even choose another area. For example, you have more information, it was around here. So you can go and click on the points and copy the extents and uh, bring them here so that uh, you're actually more empowered to see how you can actually do yourself uh, the work and uh, this one I choose to move it to the this one so now that I can remove what I copied and I can go next and again next then you'll see my area has changed just trying to give you a feedback how we can be more dynamic because you'll be told a river has flooding but only at certain sections and then you're able to go down uh, with the same values also the chunks you put it to a higher figure in case it's a bigger area and uh, your work will continue for a few minutes and uh, ideally you can have the extents and also something else from what victoria mentioned uh, you'll be having more information about when the flooding activity occurs so there's a section where you can change the dates for visualizing the extents of the of the, of the water you can do it by month so that you have the extent in July and October so that you can have a comparison. So it gives you some power on how you can actually manipulate the work for your own uh, research or products. So the results could be different. And in this case, I didn't have a lot of, uh, because I didn't have the right extents or the right areas, but I tried the same for another area in Zimbabwe, in Masvingo. Uh, where someone was trying to get uh, some points, but now it was based on the information that we get from end user or from you as a participants in this call, that uh, you need to be very sure about the area that you are actually investigating. Are you? Do you have information about the extents of the floods? Do you have the right information? Do you have the uh, right place? Do you have the right uh, information? That is what is also useful and also going back to make sure that there's data for a certain area. So there's some, some of these analysis might do for a certain area and you miss, like this one I was able to see there was data for November last month and also another data set. So at least there's two comparison, at least three data sets. So this is a very key message that you need to know that there's a data for a certain time that you want to look at and you're more empowered to get more information and also going back to Victoria in case there was another intervention. So I mentioned to uh, the colleague uh, Hassane that uh, this notebook has again been posted in the, here again and also the channel, the video will be recorded for you, has been recorded and will be shared and also we continue to hold the weekly live sessions we have the same session in french 
uh, sometime earlier this year, and we'll share the whole the information with you. And also as part of the support is to continue to grow the user community to share very impactful stories. Uh, Victoria, did you have any intervention for today before? Um, I guess, um, I think Frank had requested the chat in, um, in percentage. So I'll just do a quick share to show it's possible. Okay. So um, as you can see, we've managed to by just uh, like I'd previously explained, uh, using the total cropland um, area to divide and then multiplying by 100, you now have a graph showing the percentage um, affected uh, abut area and also the affected um, cropland area in percentage. I hope this answers your question, Frank. Yes, please. Thank